Holy cow! And my voice is gone. Tell me, I have had problems with my voice. Never had this before. I'm, I mean, I'm so nervous about being up here that I think it's like psychosomatic, my voice is... If you can hear me and understand me, fine. If not, you're lucky that I don't have to go through all the pennants and World Series that the Yankees want to be here until next Wednesday. But I want to say that I want to congratulate Murphy with the golden tonsils. Lefty, whose record speaks for itself, and the Leo the Lip, who was my type of manager. The only thing was that <clears throat> he would get on me every once in a while in some of the World Series, and he'd like to find out something personal about you. Can't this doesn't even sound like me. I can't. Anyway, DeRoche's favorite with me in the World Series was when I'd pop one up, he'd say, home run in an elevator shaft. <laughs> but he, he was a great man. And I'll tell you, the only reason that I'm here today, believe it or not, is because of you fans, my family, my relatives, and all my friends. <laughs> yeah. No, really, I think you put so much pressure on him, kept sending in those petitions and, and, and saying he should be in the Hall of Fame. And actually, my record's pale with all these great Hall of Famers behind me. And that Huckleberry Lou Brock, he keeps calling me a rookie. I'm the oldest living rookie in the Hall of Fame. I mean, you talk about it taking a long time to get here, Steve. But anyway, I had to write a few things down because I, I really was dreading this speech. And I wrote down something that says, what baseball means to me. Now, I've been so lucky, with the help of the man upstairs and my family and friends, to be with the Yankees for 54 years with the same organization. And, and baseball has made it possible for me to support my family, send them through college, and meet people and go to places that we never would have had a chance to do. My, actually, my whole life up to this moment has been baseball. And it's flashing by me so quickly. I'm going to try and tell it as quickly as it's flashing by me. Because when I was a little kid in Brooklyn, uh, <laughs> No, I tell you, it was a great spot. Pee Wee knows all about that. But when I say all the people that really helped me, my high school coach, Al Kunitz, taught me how to bunt. Without knowing how to bunt, I'd have never made it to the big leagues. Paul Critchell, the Yankee scout, signed me after Stengel and Bill Terry told me I was too small to play baseball. And that was a big break for me. My first two managers in the first two years was Ray White, who went to the same high school I did. And he took me over kids that were a lot better than I was. And you got to know somebody just like that. Bill Meyer, who was my manager at Kansas City for two years, was one of the great little managers. And he taught me a lot about baseball. The greatest manager I ever had was Joe McCarthy, old Mass Joe. But we had so many, I mean, these great World Series. We, I know I'm, this is typical of me. I, I start at the end and go back to the middle and then the beginning. And I really, I, I'm trying to get this down. When I, when I was a kid, playing in the streets of Brooklyn all those days, trying to, wanting to be a ball player, and if I had never been a ball player, I don't know what would have happened to me. A lot of nights, I'd wake up in a cold sweat thinking, had I not been a major league ball player, what would I have done for a living? Because everything I try to do turned bad. I try to run a snowblower, and I stuck my hand in and cut some of my fingers off. I mean, I can, I'm lucky I can turn on a, the car and know how it runs, and if I open the refrigerator and it's not right in front of me, I don't know what, what I'm looking for. I mean, it's, it's, it's really terrible. But when I talk about being a kid and playing on the streets of Brooklyn, I mean, we played everything that was possible, stickball, rackball, boxball, uh, paddleball. Uh, Pee Wee never heard of any of these things, because he was shooting marbles down in Louisville. But these were great games, 
and it was great for our hand-eye coordination. So we broke a couple of windows, and my mother, God bless her, said, look, get a cover off a baseball. It was tough to get a baseball, number one, but we got one, cover broke off. She filled it full of rags, and we were able to play on the street, and you could throw curve balls. And I think that helped me as much as all the, sp the spring training and all the practice in the minor leagues. Now, uh, if people are understanding this speech, just raise your hand or else you... <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm going to introduce... <laughs> My family knows me, so they raise their hands. But I'll never forget when the Yankees finally signed me to a contract, and they sent me to Bassett, Virginia in 1937. I had never been away from home. My father took a $20 bill and pinned it to my undershirt. He says, you got to watch out for those guys on the trains. And the Yankees gave me a nice seat, no sleeper, sat all the way to Bassett, Virginia. But it was a beautiful trip because we went through Washington, D.C., stopped in Richmond, Virginia, the first taste of southern fried chicken. I tell you, it was delicious. But they gave me, um, hey, White, what's that, what's that stuff that looks like oatmeal? Grits. Grits. No. They, no, they, they gave me these grits. And I didn't know what to do with them. So I put them in my pocket. And I had no idea what. But anyway, then we got to Bassett. Now, Bassett was a town of 1,600, counting the cows. I got off the train, and there was no town there. I'm looking around at mountains, just like your beautiful mountains. And then the train pulled away, and there was the town. A little drugstore, a theater that was open, only open two days a week, and a drugstore. And that was the town of Bassett. The sheriff met me there, Sheriff Kuntz. I used to have breakfast with him every morning. And he took me to the boarding house where we stayed. And don't forget, I, I was making $75 a month at this time. Saving money, sending half of it home to my mother. In those days, oh, there's no sense talking about that. I mean, it, <laughs> 